you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be in Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9. I'll read the first six verses. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beast. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread. Drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. I'm going to stop right there. Now my title today is Wisdom's Feast. Wisdom's Feast. That's because of the text. Now, I know... And I believe you know that wisdom is Christ. I mean, it's actually better said this way, probably Christ is wisdom. But Paul tells us plainly in 1 Corinthians, But unto them which are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and Christ the wisdom of God. Christ is wisdom. So when it's talking about this in Proverbs, and I believe it's in chapter 8, chapter 9, and some other places, he talks about wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Well, it's talking about Christ, Christ, Christ. That's just, you know, the truth of the matter. Now, here we read of the work of the wisdom of God. At home. At home. That's the, the, the part that really kind of struck me about this. Verse 1 says this, Wisdom has built her house. Wisdom has a house. I like that. Why does wisdom have a house? Well, A, a house is for dwelling in. It's for living in. It's for abiding in. Oh, my. Wisdom has a place to be. I kind of like that thought. Christ has a place to be. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ himself has promised, past tense, had promised to prepare what? A place for us. He says for you, talking to his disciples then. But in so talking to his disciples, he's also talking to us. Oh, my. Christ has promised that he's prepared a place for his people, and we're told here in Proverbs 9 that wisdom has built a house. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Christ has built his house, and I'm going to tell you this, it's the house of wisdom. Oh, I like that. And I'm going to tell you, before wisdom's feast, the house was built. The house was built. Oh, I like that. Because I'm going to tell you something. This is really kind of, I guess, simple logic, but it's the truth of the matter. Before there could be a feast in the house, the house has got to be built. Oh, and it's Christ's house. It's Christ's house. Wisdom's house. Oh. And it does say this. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Well, seven is the number of completion, the number of perfection. You don't need any more. The house that wisdom built is perfect. Not only that, it's complete. That house is ready for whatever wisdom wants to do. Oh, I like that thought. That's a good thought. Because Christ's house is complete and 
perfect. Oh my. It's a, it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be. Now then it says this. She built her house. She's hewn out her seven pillars. That work's finished. Okay? That work is finished. Then it says she's going to spread her table. Wisdom is going to spread the table. Going to make a table. What does it say? She has killed her beast. And I looked that up. That means, actually means butchered. Why? Because it's going to be a feast. It's going to be a feast spread on wisdom's table. Oh, I like that. She's mingled her wine and she has also furnished her table. Listen, this is, this is an amazing thing I thought of. Psalms 23 will tell you that the Lord has prepared a table for you in the midst of your enemies. But that's not the only place. He's made a table in his house for his people. Oh, I like that idea. And the food has been prepared. She has killed her beasts and hath mingled her wine. Oh, I like that. I'm going to tell you something. The meat is ready and the wine is ready. Oh, and the table say, furnished. Furnished. What's that mean? Anything that needs to be on that table is on that table. What do you want to think of? Think of plates, cups, utensils, platters, trays, and food. And food. Oh, I like that. The table is furnished and the table is ready for the feast. Whatever we need for that feast is on his table. It's Christ's house and it's Christ's table because Christ is wisdom. Whatever we need for that feast is there. And everything, here's the thing, the beautiful thing, everything, it's prepared. It's furnished. The beasts have been butchered. The wine has been mingled. You know what that is? I like to look that up, mingled wine. Well, what it is, it's wine that some stuff's been added to. Spices, whatever, something just to, just, just to make it tastier for you. Just to make it better for you. Oh my, I'm telling you something. Wisdom has prepared her feast. Wisdom has prepared her table. Everything is there. There's only one thing missing. At that house and at that table. You know what's missing? The guests. The guests. So how is Christ's house going to be populated? How is Christ's table going to be filled with people? Verse 3, she hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. For as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, come, eat of my bread. And drink of the wine, which I have mingled. I have mingled. Oh, I like that. I'm going to tell you something. We have the work finished on the house. We have the table spread, and now we have the guests invited, invited. Oh, wisdom has a house and has readied the table for the feast. I mentioned this a minute ago, but listen to this. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. For you oh and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also I'm gonna tell you something there's gonna be a people in the house of Christ there's gonna be a people at that feast at that table that he has prepared. And you know what? 
What's he say? I like this. Wisdom has sent forth messengers. Some were apostles and prophets. Some are evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And guess what? They cry. They cry loud. And what do we cry? Well, two things to know of. All flesh is grass, and behold your God. <laughs> but they also cry what? Come. Come unto Christ. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And what? I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. My burden's easy. My yoke is light. And you shall find rest for your souls. Oh, my. What's it say? Come. Come. I like that. Oh, my. What's it say? Come. And here, wisdom says, eat of my bread. My bread. Oh, that's good stuff. This is the cry of the messengers. Come. Come to Christ. Come to wisdom. <coughs> but not only that. Come and eat. Come and eat. Mmm. Consume. You know? Take it inside. You understand? It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Christ without. Is Christ within. Come eat. Come eat. What? Well, if you're heavy laden, if you're burdened, come and eat of my bread. Oh, I like that. I like that. The bread. Oh, that's where the feast begins. You understand? With the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven. Oh, my. The bread of heaven comes from Christ. Because the bread of heaven is Christ Jesus. Mm. What did he say in John 6 and verse 51? I am. Oh, I like it. I am. The living bread. The living bread. Which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus Christ, wisdom himself, is the living bread. Come eat of my bread. My bread. Oh, I like that. Mm. Again, what is that? It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Oh, my. Uh, all that the Father giveth to me shall come to me. They shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And what else? He's going to give you bread. You have bread to eat. Oh, I like that. Mm. And drink of the wine which I have mingled. Come and drink the wine which I, wisdom, Christ, have prepared have prepared. Oh, I like that. Drink the wine I've mingled. Again, consuming it. Take it within. It's within. You understand, there's a lot of people who name the name of Christ, who name the name Jesus, but they don't seem to know who they're talking about. They're talking about somebody who's begging you to come do something. No, no, no. This is a command. Come. What? Eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. He's not asking. He's telling. Now, if you have ears to hear, if you have eyes to see, if you have a heart to understand, guess what, folks? You're going to come. You're going to come because he's telling you to. 
But if you don't have ears to see, ears to hear, eyes to see, or a heart that understands, you do always, always reject the Holy Spirit. That's the state of man as he's born. We're born rejecting Christ. We're born rejecting God. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. He's built a house. He's prepared a table. He's furnished that table. And he's inviting his guests in right now. Oh, my, I like that. This drink is not just regular wine. This wine was prepared for those guests that he's calling in. Mm, I like that. Now wine in the scriptures is usually a type, shown to be a type of the blood of Christ, but it's also shown to be a type of the Holy Spirit. Oh my. What did Christ say about the Holy Spirit? He says, he, the Holy Spirit, are going to take the things of mine and show it to you. Oh, I like that. I like that. I want some of that wine. I want some of that wine. Oh, oh my. John 14 verse 7 says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. Ye know him. Oh, I like that. Why? For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now these are the words of Christ 2,000 years ago. And at the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came in to his people. Came to his people, but came in his people. And has been that way ever since. Why? Because he went back and he sent the Spirit to be in you. In you. Oh, I like that. Come and eat of my bread. Come and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Oh, I like that. It's prepared. That drink was prepared. That bread was prepared. Oh. Come, eat of my bread and drink the wine I've prepared. And then it says this. Now we have the exhortation given. We've seen the work finished, the table spread. The invitation of the guests, actually the command of the guests. Here we see the exhortation, forsake the foolish and live. And live. Oh, I like that. And here it is. Go in the way of understanding. I, I, <laughs> well, you can look in verse 8 of this same Proverbs, chapter 9, it says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Forsake the foolish. Forsake the foolish. It does tell you in there, he that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. Reject. It doesn't do you any good to argue with the foolish. You cannot the way of this world, okay? You can't fix stupid. People have signs up. I understand why those signs are up, okay? Because you can't fix stupid. But here, what, what the writer of these Proverbs is saying, you can't. You can't. What's it say? I mean, too, reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Forsake the foolish and live. And you can take that any way you want. <coughs> it's still the scripture. It's still the scripture. But then it says, go in the way of the understanding. Oh, my. What well, does the rest of verse 8 says? It says, reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee. But then it says, rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Understand, believers, and this is not exactly the most pleasant subject, believers need to be rebuked. We need to be rebuked sometimes. Chastisement 
is never pleasant. I think that's why they call it chastisement. But afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Rebuke a wise man, he'll love thee. You understand? Oh, let's put it this way. Sometimes it's hard to be corrected, but it's very good to be corrected. It's hard on me, personally. But it's also very good for me, personally. Oh, I like that. <coughs> Verse 9 says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Then here you have this famous statement. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy what, is understanding understanding that's verse 10 oh my then look at verse 11 for by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased if thou be wise thou shalt be wise for thyself but if thou scornest thou alone shalt bear it oh my you understand? Wisdom built a house. But wisdom built that house to be inhabited. Christ's house is to be inhabited. And he's chosen his people from before the foundation of the world. Now, I know some people hate that. I know some people call that heresy, Paul. They do. Oh, no. Have you never read... Yeah, the whole book, yeah. But have you never read, The Lord has created the wicked for the day of evil? Yeah. What? Do I mean that? Does the book say it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean it. Yes, I mean it. <laughs> Understand. There are children of wrath fitted for destruction. Now, what does that mean? You want the deep, dark, underlying meaning of that? The deep theological sense of that? Well, it means that there are people fitted for the day of evil. There are wicked people. Now, did God's people used to be wicked? Yes. Such were some of you. And there was that whole litany before that, murderers, adulterers, and everything else, blasphemers. But the whole key thing there, Paul wrote it, such were some of you, but you were washed. You're clean. Oh, my. But the potter has made vessels unto honor, and the potter has made vessels unto dishonor. But Christ has made his house to be inhabited by his chosen people. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a feast coming. There's a feast coming. Oh, wisdom has promised a feast. And I'm going to tell you something. Wisdom's feast is going to be good. It's going to be good. Oh, we're fed here. But he's going to feed us up there personally. Amen. He's prepared a house. You know, it's got seven pillars. It doesn't need any more. It's got a table. And that table's furnished. That table's furnished. And the meat has been butchered. And the wine has been mingled. Oh, I like that idea. Oh, my. Understand this. That's. Hear the words of Christ himself. This is from Luke 7, 33, 34 and 35. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you said he's got a devil. He hath a devil. The son of man has come, what? Eating and drinking. And you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. 
I'm going to tell you something, that part about a friend of publicans and senators. Yes, he was. But here's this. But wisdom is justified of her children. I like that. Wisdom is justified of her children. The children of wisdom are going to be in the house of wisdom. And there's going to be a feast there one day, folks. There's going to be a feast. Oh, my. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, came, came eating and drinking, and he's prepared a place for us, and he will raise up all that come to him at the last day. Oh, I like that. And Christ has a feast prepared for his saints, for his people, for his believers. And he's gathered them out of every kindred, nation, tribe, and tongue under heaven. Matter of fact, it says one place, they're going to come from the east and the west and the north and the south. And what? They're going to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. That's good company. That's good company. And I'm going to tell you something. What's it mean when they're going to sit down? We're going to sit down and eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, where? In the house of wisdom, in the house of wisdom. Oh, I like that. We shall feast in his house. Oh, I'm tell you, you understand, he came eating and drinking and we're gonna be gathered to him. He's gathering us to himself, what? To eat and to drink at the feast at his table. I like that. I found this. This is a verse from uh, John Barrage. I think his name is. Barrage is his name. I forget the first name. The Lord of the feast we solemnly bless and pray that each guest may grow in his grace. Thanks for his preparing his banquet of love Oh, may we all share in the banquet above. I like that. I like that idea. He, it's, it's, we're fed here, his word, you know. He maketh us to lie down beside the still water, you know. He leads us into green pastures. And when we're gathered above, guess what? We're still going to be by the green pastures. We're still going to be by the still water. And what's it say? He restoreth my soul, my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's prepared a feast for us. And we're going there one day for that feast in person. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful again today for this time and this place. Be with Walter as he preaches at Bethel Baptist. Be with Paul as he comes before us here to preach your gospel. But Lord, help us to help us to know you now and bring us home when you're ready. Lord, we're willing to go. We may not know what's best for us, but all we know is that you are what's best for us. Your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave himself for us and gave himself to us that we might live in your presence. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.